All right, so today I'm with Bars Müller uh, and we are here in Grisa. We're going to talk about what's in your boat bag. So right now you are traveling with your amazing van. Uh, so when you travel like to a competition, to an event, mm -hmm. uh, let's go through the gear that you like to, you like to have. Well, uh, as we all know, we have a beautiful sport we're doing. I love water sports. I have a, a few small issues. I love doing winging, I love doing kiting, windsurfing, surfing, everything. That's a lot of gear. So, as you can imagine, <laughs> traveling somewhere or anywhere, it's always hell lots of gear. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, so as you can see, it's a big mess. I hope my <laughs> wife is not watching this episode because uh, she's so annoyed by me. I'm, 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 yeah, I'm sleeping in between foils and boards, I'm, but that's what I love doing. That's my life. So, uh, so I see, I see your wing here. Is that your? That's your, your go-to wing. It's my baby. So going through, going through my equipment, um, my one-to-go setup I would always use is basically this boom wing in three-point size, three-point-six. Okay. That's my three-meter. But as you can see, that's the NC's top spin. And um, coming from windsurfing, uh, I love the boom wing with all its unlimited possibilities to... And, to yeah, you do a lot of like spinning yeah, the wing. Yeah, to fool around with it. And um, the cool thing about the boom, the boom is always there. And with the handles, sometimes they're not there anymore. Like you, you need to yeah, catch you, them. Yeah. And in the certain time you're looking to grab hand, one handle from one handle to the other handle, you lose so much time. And in freestyle winging, you don't have that time. That's why I... I do absolutely love the boom. It's such a comfortable boom to ride on. Some and people say uh, maybe like a boom is heavier. Does it like bother you? Or? I actually like it even more. No. Okay. <laughs> no, in wave riding that would be a case and an issue. But the cool thing about the boom is it, it drops the wing and then it actually sheets the wing in and it pulls further downwards. So mm. it floats even easier next to you. Okay. Personally, I don't feel the extra weight and now with the rigid handles it's actually easier because you only have two connections and not the four connections. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the boom is kind of heavier than a, a super small IKEA bag which uh, winging started in the very beginning being just a sport where you just grabbed onto a bag. Yeah, yeah. And then that bag eventually got better and better, more performance and, yeah, and yeah. whatever, but it got always heavier. And so, uh, when, you, when you pack it for a trip, so you have to like take it apart, uh, you put it in your board bag. No, me, I always like, I ride up to the gate with it blown up. Okay, yeah. <laughs> with the skate. <laughs> the foil I always, always keep assembled. No, the cool thing about this boom is um, we have this system, so there's one screw and on the inside we have this, it, it goes into each other and it clicks into each other. So not all the load is on the screw only. So it's, mm. it's kind of a really good load absorbing system. Okay. And I haven't damaged anything in within the within the two years of develop, yeah, uh, yeah, development yeah. and riding i only bend the booms okay but a <laughs> bend the boom can be even better for riding ergonomically you know so yeah, yeah. we're testing around nice. <laughs> so the top spin ends is three six is definitely my fair favorite favorite size maybe i got to tell a little little bit little bit more about that wing because each size comes in another color mm. and I freakingly love it because yeah, I yeah. want to have different colors, yeah, you know. Yeah. I want to see like on the water, if, there, if there's a friend on the water, I want to see straight away, oh, he's riding the pink one, that's the 3.6. He's riding the yellow one, that's the 4.6. Yeah, yeah. So, beautiful. And now, getting, getting into, into my board pack. Okay, yeah. Because I actually do have a really beautiful board pack. Nice. In retro colors. I want to go as retro as possible and this pack is from Foil, foil, foil boarding products from the UK. So they do create everything for assembling foils, for carrying foil equipment. This bag is beautiful. You can walk with it to the spot. Because back home in Switzerland, we do have um, a lot of spots where we actually almost need to climb down. Okay, yeah. So this bag so is can, like, very hike. practical. Yeah. We do, they also do foil bags where you can actually put your foil in it and everything, and then you can carry down. Okay. So if I travel, I have the beautiful foil, foil board products. Nice. And um, yeah, check it out, FB. And then there's my baby, and this is literally my baby. Um, yeah, as I said previously, I'm almost spending as much time with this board than my wife and daughter. 
um, most of the time together because she's riding it as well. So that's oh, okay. our one to go board. Nice. That's quite a, f a, f a, a annoying situation because we always got to change the straps. Yeah, yeah. But at the moment she's still riding with booties and I'm riding already barefoot. So, so we have size. the same size. Okay, perfect. And one board, it's my um, seven, uh, 57. <laughs> 57 liter board. As you can see, uh, sand baked, super compact, fresh, fresh treasure. No, it's a rock solid, rock solid compact wing board. So what, what do you use it for like uh, everything? Or? Racing, doing a death fee, freestyling, wave riding. Everything. Have one board. And, and, and is that like uh, production or custom? That's a team edition. Okay. But you can buy this team edition for the extra amount of money. Okay, so it is like so, kind of like production and people yes, can buy it. But it's quite heavy. So if okay. you would lift it up, but that's the reason why I'm going on big mm. trips like like um, I've been in Caparete a few a few months ago with just this board, and that's a sketchy one. If you travel with only one board, first of all you always got to do the compromises in size, blah blah blah, whatever. But yeah, you you got to be sure that this thing is holding up. So you said this is like um, heavier, and then you know often. Uh, people want like a lighter bone. So wh why do you choose to like go with like a heavier bone? Well, we we all love having a light board, but uh, in the end, it's a compromise of having a board you can trust in and you can spend a relation with it as well. Because having a light board that breaks after a few a few rides, I mean, it's so frustrating. So that's why I prefer sticking to a board that's a little bit heavier. But I mean, we're talking about three pasta more in the evening, you know. So I'm always, I know people are really picky on the, on the, on the weight, but themselves, exactly. they eat chocolate and whatever. Exactly. So if you want, so, instead of having a lighter board, maybe do, go on a diet for a week yeah. and then you will. <laughs> and then you can ride a smaller board, which feels lighter <laughs> yeah. in the end as well. No, no, it's a, you, you, it, everything needs to be in balance. I and mean, I see like quite a few like dings, dings. and so you are, you are a good I'm tester. I'm a good tester. My boss is really happy about what I'm... <laughs> How I'm treating my putting equipment, it, putting it to a test. The way how uh, the normal customer usually also treats it. So, oh. do, you, you, do you always ride with with uh, foot straps? Yes, and that's a good point. Foot straps, foot straps. I think it's the most, the most important thing about foiling, foil freestyling, because without foot straps, yeah, this this kind of stuff happens every now and then again. Yeah, yeah. So I do have the foot strap set. First of all, <laughs> many important steps. Go. On both sides don't limit yourself just going goofy or regular because your brain can do it on both sides there's not such a bad side there's just a less trained side so you got yeah, to yeah. spend time training on both sides i'm definitely guilty of that um, i always put one strap yeah, in a front. well look we have it as well on that board the option and i know how um i know how pleasant it is to yeah, ride on yeah, the good yeah, side yeah but uh, maybe, you know, we may be turning a little bit older, so it doesn't matter anymore. We just want to have a great time out there. But the younger kids, they're capable of doing tricks on both yeah, sides. Yeah. And the craziest thing is in winging, I started from the very beginning, not thinking about having a wrong side because I've been windsurfing 18 yeah, yeah, years yeah. and I've been always having that prime regular side. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And even now when you look at my legs, it's so asymmetrical. And that's uh, such a bad thing because yeah, yeah. the shoulders will be asymmetrical and everything is going to be messed up. But anyway, important to me, these are not the, well, the best set straps, but important to me is a very tight strap. But I'm not talking about tight and then the stra strap is like 20 cm wide because then you have still no connection. But as you can see here, I'm like all the way in into this strap. And it's touching. But I'm still, I'm still it's touching both sides, but I'm still capable on on, on twisting it all around and doing like a like a 360 in it. So that's a good that's a good point. Yeah. So now I'm all the way in and I have like the grip all the way around, especially on the sides. Because the grip on the sides that allows me allows me to not lose the board mm. in the yaw axe. And like this I'm super super tight. But if shit goes wrong I could twist the 360 in it. Mm, okay. So, you so see, if I assemble the strap, we see here it's quite like narrow uh, and high. Narrow, yeah, and narrow and high. So and if even if you assemble it, I'm sometimes even getting into the into like you should be able to be like in the strap like this, because um, that prevents me from breaking my ankle more than I already do. 
Yeah, yeah. And it, in wind, freestyle windsurfing, I've been actually you you break your either way you break your toes here in the front or like the metacarpal bones or you break your whole whole ankle. And breaking your whole ankle is almost impossible, but breaking a toe or the metacarpal, it's yeah, yeah. So quick happen. And so if you if you ride your straps super low and narrow as a decent freestyler at a certain point when you when you're upside down you're gonna lose your board mm. and that's not what you wanna experience. Yeah yeah. So you wanna stick to that board as good as possible and don't get it loose. And uh, again it's very individual. Every rider has his own feel and yeah, yeah. Uh, and love. Do you ever ride with a leash if you have foot straps? <sighs> People always ask like Yeah it's you know. a good question. I if you ride alone on a windy, wavy spot, as long as it's onshore, it's all fine. Go without the leash. If you're a, if you're a good swimmer and if you're an active rider and you you can react quick, but if you're alone out there and you lose your board, there's no chance you're gonna grab it again as soon as the water's a little bit wider. Yeah, wider. Yeah. So I saw here at the Defi probably 60% without board leash. But I saw many guys <laughs> chasing after their board. Yeah, especially their here boards. with like offshore wind. If you're alone, yeah. the board is gone. And I yeah. always choke and I say, I love sailing together with people. Even though it's a solo sport, I love like having this wipe on the water. And my friends are my leash. So we work together. Like we, we watch each other, we cheer each other. And if I see a board drifting, I go there. I have a nice chat anyway on the water. So if you ride together, you can, you can help out each other. And, uh, and there's like those water star technique, uh, water body drag yeah, techniques, yeah, yeah. how you actually reach your board quite efficient and quick. Although board leash, as, as soon as you want to do overhead flips or riding crazy snarly slaps, I got the foil slingshot in my face because of a leash. Yeah. So I took that decision from the very, very beginning, not riding with leashes anymore. And uh, yeah, yeah it's, if, I if haven't you're lost anything yet. If you're gonna lose the bar while you are doing a rotation, you would rather have the bar to go rather but than come back. Also, also talking about leash, because um, I ride well. I ride many, many different leashes, but talking about the board leash, the coiled leash is almost essential. So at least the, the rebounds, the slingshot, gonna be slower. Okay. And this is even my wing leash. That's, maybe we can talk about that later again as well. Mm. I mean, we can talk about plenty of stuff, but this is my wing leash at the moment. It, it stretches out very, very long, so it can go twice around my body. I can do those handle passes and, and okay. don't get tangled up. Yeah. So that's why I'll use the board leash since two years. Well, since, since I'm not using it for the board anymore, I'm using it for the and wing. Do you, so wrist. you use for, for both of them, for the wing too, do you think, uh, does it bother you if it's like... It bothers it, me while if pumping. It's heavier. Oh. It hits me all the yeah. time, but the good thing as it's heavier, it's sort of, pre it, it's predictable where it will swing through. Yeah. While the thin rope is catching me likewise, yeah, yeah. maybe even worse. So this one, I know exactly where it's going to swing through. And it's, it floats as well, yeah, like yeah. sort of better. Yeah. So I'm less annoyed by this heavy coil that then, is uh, hanging down than the nice thin. Good. But good. that's again, like you've got intro. to try everything. So that's my beautiful board bag. And uh, now last but not least, I guess the most important thing, and it's literally the most important thing these days about, um, about water sports, because uh, we're not surfing the boards anymore. The board is very important. A huge difference but what really 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 matters is what we're nowadays riding in the water and there comes my baby Julia <laughs> no this is um well you can see this is Medusa that's the 799 the well-known subfoil 799 it's it's still my pro model from from their line and this is my one to go foil so I'm going on most on the trips windsurfing kite surfing winging surf foiling with one foil, bringing it sometimes one size smaller, but most of the time just the 799. And with this foil, it's a big foil, 1,100. I'm riding big foils since uh, the beginning. I've been riding big foils that allows me to, to be just, yeah, to be more efficient on the water. I get up straight away. I don't bother if I should try a trick now or not, because I could not be getting up again after the trick. So with this big foil, I'm constantly flying, having a great time on the water, 
no matter what water sport I'm doing. And again, yeah, I think foils are like the most important thing at the moment because we're spending 99% of the, of the session, hopefully, on the yeah, foil. Yeah, that's the goal. That's the goal. <laughs> Um, so actually, so let's before we move on. Um, Sub foil from Italy. So yeah, I, like I'm very. Um, to me, this is very interesting because I feel like this is bigger than most pro riders mm -hmm. on tour. Definitely, um, like double the size of the rest of the fleet. Yeah, but it doesn't. Uh, so like I feel like the often people are saying like the better you get, the smaller you go, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. obviously a lot of us are not better than you, and you ride probably bigger foils than us. Mm -hmm. So. Um, you know, do you, can, can you still go <laughs> fast enough? Like, uh, I reach good speeds. I reach definitely enough speed to probably attempt a double backflip straight. Um, the cool thing about this foil is it has such an enormous pop, and that gives me this, yeah, this e easy air time doing uh, those crazy double, triple, quad, triple moves we're going, we're going to, and um, and having that easy rebounds after the trick, which is. Uh, at the moment, the most important part, we, we want to make this sport as clean and smooth as possible. And therefore we need, we need, I would say not the surface, but we need the span. Yeah. And uh, you can see now also the latest foils, they're way more high, high, high aspect. And they also pop up like this one, but they're much harder to ride. So that's why I love, well, so, I, <laughs> and then, and then it is quite like, like lower aspect, I guess, it maybe than mid, most people. Mid, yeah, mid, mid yeah. aspect, um, lower but than what most pro riders ride. Um, but there is, this, there is this trend, you know, like we, we have those crazy high aspect yeah. foils, which are in a kind of way really fun to ride, but you got to be, you got to be ready for it as well. And but this foil is just like... What, what I love about this one is how like, um, like carvy it is. Like, rolls like, yeah, and it carves. rolls like really good. I can literally breach like half the wing and still keep the control. And that's a important part. And honestly, mid aspect foils, this foil is now two and a half years old. It was leading the game. Now all the brands are coming up with really good, really, really good and fun mid aspect foils as well. But it started low aspect and everyone thought, oh, we got to make those yeah. Ferraris. And now we figured out that the market cannot ride a Ferrari, but they enjoy a lot the mid aspect. That's why that's my mid aspect baby. And, and I love it. You do a lot of like uh, freestyle jumping. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, have you ever break? <laughs> that's the crazy thing. And I might, I might need to, this is a one of only a few foils I haven't broken in an instant, because that's, that's an important point. And, uh, yeah, because you know, foils are expensive, people buy their foils, they don't exactly. want a foil that break. But one of the main reasons why I still love subfoil and why well, I still ride with subfoil and being so passionate about it, this is like maybe not the most efficient concept and people telling me, ah, you should be riding on those high, high tech, high end carbon foils. We do have a really solid aluminium fuselage with M8 screws. 3 m 8 screws on quite a long widespread surface like this. I can fool around with one set and I, I can keep bouncing, like bouncing onto the water surface and not destroying stuff. And uh, therefore I'm so thankful for Subfall that we're still doing this quite rigid, yeah, heavy yeah. construction and solution. Because um, I love riding these light, nice, shiny carbon foils doing one jump and then they're broken. Yeah. That's not the goal. And so yeah. again, like on the board side, I have heavy duty, heavy duty equipment that just keeps, yeah, keeps yeah. holding on. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so sure. that's, um, that's what, what size uh, fuselage uh, <laughs> do you like to ride with? All right. So I'm constantly riding this 703, a 70 cm fuse. We do have now a 65 as well. For pump foiling, I prefer that one. For okay. surf foiling as well, yeah. kite foiling, it's more reactive and agile. But for me, 70 is a good balance between pivot stability and still the, the, the capability of popping the foil as easy as possible. Yeah. Definitely, the shorter you go on the fuse, the more reactive, the harder to ride. But the longer, it's just, again, I want to enjoy my ride and not having, having to struggle on the water. So I, I prefer having easy gear, yeah, maybe yeah. not the most efficient, but easy. What uh, tail do you like to ride with that setup? Oh, there are 100 tails at, at subfoil. And, but, uh, and at it the... is like for everybody like wanting to buy a foil out there, it's very complicated. 
what front wing do I, do I show? So here we, we just talk about the 799 being your favorite. Uh, but the tail also gets very confusing for people. So if, if you would recommend one tail, <laughs> the one, if you could only travel with one, where would it be? It's been the 399 for many, many, for many, many years. For three years in a row, I've been only riding this step, the 399. And the good thing about the 399, it sort of has the glide. It has the rollability. It has a really good pivot stability, has good leverage, hmm. but then yeah, we involved a lot and at the moment, like if you're a bit advanced rider, I would recommend you the 370. As an advanced rider, the 370 is going to be like the smoothest, the most agile and fastest step we have at the moment, which is easy to control. And then for the big market, and I've been riding that one yesterday, the 380, for the big market we created this goal wing which creates more driving, driving control, more traction as well in the ride, really smooth carves. It might doesn't breach as well as a, as a flat 370, but the 380, that's the one we're selling these days with most of the kits. It's not the efficient, but the most versatile step. Okay. And then, yeah, we do have like crazy negative steps, which, um, which are basically impossible to ride, but they would be fast. <laughs> so, but I think that's going in this direction. So advanced rider, which, which wanna, wanna ride as well in waves on my foil. I'm, I'm always talking about my foil at the moment. They, they prefer the 370. And then the big market is like happy on the 380 for its easy ability yeah, yeah. and get going. Cool. Yes. Uh, what about the mast? So yes, yeah, so that's a uh, mast so, height. And um, I have my one to go, which is which is since a long, long time. The where is that mast? No, I do have the windsurf mast here. That's may I, I have both. Oh, is it? So that's maybe even a good, a good, a good point also to showcase. We have this inter interchangeable modular Kraken system. So what's really nice about that system, I can travel with two two pieces of my 83 masts. So I'm safe. I don't break them anymore. But in the beginning, in the development process, two years, one and a half year ago, I've, I've been still breaking some. So I was traveling with two masts, but I had only one, one hair piece. So I could like, if something went wrong, I could change it. Okay. And as well, having different lengths. Now it's quite easy to travel. You just have this, the, the plain mast that's quite light in your board bag. Yeah. And then you have the different assembling possibilities like deep tuttle, WS. Yeah, so that is the, 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 the Kraken. Uh, in system and with one screw you, you could can change it yeah take the plate off and then replace your mast exactly and so my one to go is the 83 yeah definitely 83 i use for windsurfing for winging in kiting i sometimes rather go 93 but uh 83 works fine for me so that's my one to go pump foiling i go on the 73 yeah but therefore we also have this best special pump foil edition wing so the 73p that's yeah. the Stiffer. the one I use yeah. it has a thicker profile so when you use it for wind sports you you will feel you generate drag yeah in a but kind of way pump, at, at least you can you yeah know, pump but the you have the stability foils. and yeah. you can you can ride, even in surf foiling I like it slower speeds yeah because you have this direct sensation of being super connected with the power source the foil so and and even like the the 83, if somebody's gonna check it out in person, um, it's a thin profile. Yeah, so you feel like this foil is like stiff. Um, that's always like uh, for every like carbon mass on the market. The problem is often either it's stiff but it's too thick and it yeah. ventilates, exactly. or it's thin but then it's super soft. So what what would you like? How would you describe this one? The perfect balance yeah. and also like we. We constantly fight with the weight again, but as, as I was saying, I want to have a foil. I travel to, to, to an island and I want to be on that island the whole year. And I just, just don't want, I mean, there's no chance I get a new foil to this island and that will be the mast I will go there at the moment. Because I'm constantly, like I'm still, like I have these M8 screws here, which is a heavy duty connection again. But this connection, I don't bother about it anymore. I don't have any damage anymore. Yeah. Like we used to have, a few years ago also like all the foil brands went through this and i know there there are um, lighter versions of how we could solve this these problems but definitely there's not much we can do to keep a good balance between weight 
and durability and I think we're doing a great job so in this direction. Overall for you like durability is very <laughs> it's important. Key. Yeah. Cuz I'm uh, f I'm, yeah, I'm doing water sport, windsurfing for so, so many years, for decades, and I've been breaking so much gear. And we all know there's nothing as frustrating yeah, as, yeah. as having, a, having to stop a cool session. Your friends are blasting around and yeah, you, yeah. you have to figure out a new solution, what you're going to write. So heavy duty, heavy duty equipment for, um, for people which don't want to bother about uh, the, the durability and having a great time on the water. So, and then let's talk about like harness. You ride sometimes with a harness. <laughs> yeah. Like you just, you were the first one recently to do the, the no, <laughs> no hand the backflip. backflip and then you uh, were yeah. able to do it with yeah. a harness. Well, um, there's this wingman harness coming from Italy. It's handmade in Italy. So uh, it has, it has it, its price, but it's, uh, yeah, it's, um, that's a prototype, I got to say. But in this prototype, I do have like a motocross back to, um, to absorb the force. Okay. So, uh, and yeah, the no hand backflip, we do, that's, I can just teaser it up at the moment, but we do have like a nice harness, harness line system that allows me doing crazy air tricks. More will, uh, more will be, yeah, will be showing up on Wingman quite soon. So uh, yeah, wingman harness. It's an interesting point. Not so sh I'm I'm still not sure if the average rider will use a harness in the next few years. If so, the development needs, still needs to be needs to be done because it's it's different to yeah, other yeah. sports. Yeah. But uh, I see more and more people enjoying riding with uh, with the uh, harness. And I mean, like in the other sports as well. In the beginning, Robin Nash he thought he's like the strongest yeah, badass yeah, yeah, guy yeah. in the world, and even he turned into a wing uh, harness windsurfer yeah, at a yeah. certain time. So uh, let's so, see where it goes. And then you, you never use a harness unless you plan on, or like well, when would you use a harness? So there are two, definitely one, one main reason, racing, course racing, upwind. Yeah. Uh, I, I've done a course race 1K upwind before harnesses were uh, existing for yeah, winging. Yeah. And that was killing us. I literally, like, I, I was at the moment I thought, oh, I couldn't quit this. <laughs> so that's where we need harness, course racing, definitely a death feel like here. And then for the guys which are just there to enjoy their time on the water, mainly want to float downwind on the lake, doing down, lit, short downwind runs, they can easily ride upwind again, hook in, cruise upwind, and then just yeah. release the wing and float down. And uh, there are many, many cool harness systems now popping up that you have like elastic leash, uh, elastic harness line, so they don't bother you while riding. Yeah, yeah. So definitely a lot of stuff coming up. And then, yeah, you can also release the wing and anchor yeah, it. Yeah, exactly. So I'm super, super excited where this sport is going. <laughs> and um, I'm stoked being part of this uh, wing fall revolution. And we could talk for hours <laughs> but i guess you guys got to move on Actually, i got before, to move on like last thing <laughs> like you do a lot of pumping so yes let, let's let's just check out your like um i do have something very very cool to show you guys as well because that's the new hip hop nice. hippity hop pump foil board um what's really nice it's actually really easy to assemble mm. with this it slides in slide in box um some people would say oh that's small for a pump foil board but i mean as an ambitious beginner, you will, you will get on that board and you will love it from the very beginning because it floats enough to swim back to the shore easily. Yeah. Even though we don't want to swim back to the shore when the water is like four degrees, but sometimes <laughs> it happens that you got to swim back. And I've been spending a lot of time on the pump foil equipment recently as light wind and I can go pump foil winging. And, um, so, yeah. This Most is important about the, the pump foiling, again, I guess, like, like we said before, the board can be beautiful, but in the end, the board just needs to be a solid platform that has no, no flex, no torsion, whatever. So that's a, <laughs> a really solid pump foil board. Yeah, yeah. Also quite, quite heavy. But, not, but not, like a, not like a piece of whoop. But solid. Uh, so if you do a dog style and, this, and, and you, you, you mess up and it, it like hit the dog, doing it a lot of times organ. and then going into the rocks. But again, I think more important than the board is like what we're riding on in the water. And I got this beast here, the Leviton. Well, that was actually the, the first prototype I received 
one and a half, one year ago. And from the very first day, I've been in love with that talc. And I think I'm spending more time on this foil or the most time on this foil because they're like in Switzerland, they're 365 days where you could potentially be pump foiling. Or what I'm doing a lot nowadays, stand up paddling with the stand up sub winging with, the, yeah. with this one, even windsurfing on this foil on a cruising speed of 6 km. So like almost like my friend, he's freestyling, freestyle windsurfing, he's standing, floating on his board and I'm next to him flying and we have a chit a chit, a chit chat <laughs> while I'm cruising on this beast. So 1350, definitely my one to go size, the best compromise of, uh, of control and still having the, this epic leverage of this foil. But we do have two bigger sizes, as yeah. big as me, yeah, yeah. <laughs> bigger than us. Yeah. Which um, for heavier guys, it's like the easiest thing to do the flat water pop-ups with the sub. I didn't brought my sub with me as the forecast was crazy. But um, yeah, I'm, I'm spending a lot of time on this beast. And so for pumping, you like a shorter I have uh, fuselage? The, the 65 yeah. fuse that makes it easier in the pivot axe, which allows me to pump as long as possible without really getting tired. Because yeah. it's just... And there's this young Italian, uh, Ernesto, he pumped 40 freaking five minutes, 45 minutes wow. on this foil. And I'm like, all right, I, I, I pumped 12 minutes. I thought, oh, we got to like make a Guinness Book World Record <laughs> announcement two years ago. And then a few days, a few weeks later, one guy pumped 22 minutes and then 30 minutes and now 45 minutes. For them, it's like going out and having a run, chucking around. And I'm like, one minute and your leg is burning and uh, it's, I think pump foiling has a big potential. We still haven't figured out in which direction it goes. I've seen Theo doing this 360 pumped up flat. On flat There's yeah. Nicolas doing the, the backflip pumped up. I'm pumped doing yeah. all this stuff <laughs> as well. But again, I got to say, and then you can just grab your wing and you cruise on that thing and you just have a, a nice time in three to seven knots. Yeah, so and you think, uh, do you ever like um, light wind wing mm -hmm. with this one? I use it yeah. a lot, yeah. as it also matches my fuselage on the, on the 799. So yeah. I, I'm on this one till the wind gets stronger than eight to nine knots and then I will swap to the, to the freestyle foil. But, uh, Obviously, we do have a lot of light wind days back home in Switzerland. So thanks to this foil, I'm spending even more time on the water and my wife is even more annoyed. So she's, <laughs> she loves pump foiling and she's also really, she's a water sports enthusiast just as me. So we're having great time on that one and I can't wait to get my daughter on that foil. She's one and a half, but I can't wait to push her <laughs> on that foil so she can experience so. that sensation of <laughs> flying like, uh, like we all love. Yeah, yeah. Cool. All right. Yes. Well, and then you, you, you do some windsurfing sometime. We don't have to go in details about it. Uh, no, but you still, I love it. You still, you <laughs> still do it. Um, yeah, I have like the the three point three, so the strong, the strong storm wind windsurf equipment. When it gets when it gets really gnarly, actually, the last days was quite gnarly. I still prefer being on the windsurf equipment. Yeah. And the craziest thing, always when I windsurf, I feel so insecure, and I get back up on the wing, and I'm like. What is freaking sport? Being unconnected between power source and board, it's it's so scary in a kind of way and still so uh yeah, so freaking amazing. And yeah, it's blowing my mind every session out there. I hope you guys feel the same. I mean, it's uh I love it. I love yeah. what's going on and um Thanks a lot for, uh, for having me yeah, on. Yeah, well, so, and to finish uh, this video, if there was one tip that you would give to somebody that's like winging out there, what would be your like number one tip? Dream, dream of wing foiling. Because I've learned most of the tricks up there because on the water, it always hurts. <laughs> so uh, dream, dream having, uh, trying to have the, the possibility to see yourself 360 degrees, imagining yourself doing a maneuver from the outside. So before going on the water and just like flip head first into the wing, we did it anyway yeah, as well, yeah. even we thought we could do it, but take your time, look what other people are doing, observe what they're doing and talk with people about maneuvers, dream about maneuvers and try to imagine yourself doing this maneuver from all directions and uh, and that's the way how you you're gonna succeed the easiest and quickest way i guess cool. 
Cool. Looking right, well, forward to ride with you guys. You, thank you so much. <laughs> and you. we'll see you guys next week.